good morning. Uh, it's Pentecost Sunday, so I just believe God's going to do something special here today. I was just, uh, uh, he's been doing just so much in my life and just it's been changing me. I just feel like since I preached last, which is probably about a month ago, I feel like I'm totally a different person. I feel like God's done something just so fresh. And one of the things that I realize you know, as being a leader is when God starts changing the leader, what he's doing is just changing the church. Because he brings the leader to a place to be able to bring the people to that place. You know, and I just believe that God is wanting to pour out his spirit in a fresh way. And so I have a Holy Spirit we're, we're going to be talking about as a, the sermon series for the next few weeks. And you know, one of the things that I, I think that just kind of hurts the heart of God, though, is you know, there's a lot of churches that talk about God, but they don't experience God. There's a lot of churches that all talk about Jesus, but they really have no clue really who he is. You know, they pretty much know Jesus like how a lot of you know celebrities. They know a lot of stories and tabloids and heard from other people and testimonies, but they don't have a true, genuine encounter with God themselves. And I just believe that all it takes is just one encounter with God to change your life. A lot of these great men and women of faith, they just had one encounter with God that totally just wrecked them to the place that they were never the same. And I, I just believe that God wants to, to do that for us. And so we're going to do something just a little different here today than we normally do. And, and, and we're really going to just create an environment for God to move. I, I don't know exactly what's going to happen all the way. And uh, the, the closer I get to God, the more I realize that I can do nothing without Him. You know, like, if I had an agenda where I'm just, I'm going to pray for people today and I just believe for people to be healed from sickness, no, it might not happen because I don't have the power to do that. But I know if the Holy Spirit tells me, then it's going to happen. You know, and for some of us, you know, we're, we're, we have this faith within our faith and not faith within Jesus and we're not really being led by Jesus. And so... What I, want to, what I want to do right now is I just want to prepare our hearts. You know, because I, I think that this is really important for us. If we're going to go forward with God, if we're going to experience God, we have to prepare our hearts. You know, he's a king. And if you want his kingdom to come into your life, you must bow down to him as your Lord, as your Savior. You know, he just doesn't come in to your life and bring his kingdom into your life unless he's your king. And so... No, the, the Bible talks about, there was this one story in the Bible where Jesus went to this place called Nazareth, which was actually his hometown. And, and as he was a, in Nazareth, the Bible says that he said that a prophet isn't honored in his own hometown. And so the Bible goes on to the next verse and talks about how Jesus was not able to perform many miracles there. You know, and that can be like church. You know, we, we can be like the hometown. We can be like those, the family members. We've been in church for so long that we've gotten so familiar with God that we can come into church, just sip on our coffee, just enjoy the worship, and we can forget that we're there to engage with God. We're there to minister to God, and we just begin to go into church because we just get so used to it, and we think, oh, that's just great music, and I love the music and hearing it. It's like, you no, know, worship's nothing to do with you. It's everything to do with God. And we can hear these messages and we're like, no, I just feel great today. You know, I just feel really encouraged. And, you know, encouragement is really great. But really, if you're not getting closer to Jesus, there's an issue. You know, if your heart isn't being drawn to Jesus at the end of the day, if you're just saying, well, my pastor is so good. You know, I just love hearing his messages. You know, then there's something going on that's not really right at that church. You know, because at the end of the church, I, I believe that people shouldn't even remember that the pastor preached. They should just remember that Jesus touched their life. And I believe that God wants to do something fresh in this church, but in order for us to do that, we have to give him honor. You know, one of the things that God was just speaking to me last week is he said, I'll come in as much as you honor me. You know, I'll come in as much as you honor me. And this is the thing about God, though, is the Bible says he's a first love. It doesn't say that he comes in as a second love or a third love or a fourth love. And, and that's our, our, our problem is that he's not our first love. And so we wonder, 
no, where is God and why isn't his presence in our church? And we begin to just kind of make up things in our head, thinking that, trying to make ourselves feel better, like as if we got God, but we're really just missing out on really what God has for us. And I just want to tell you today that he only is a first. He won't be your second. He won't be your third. He won't be your fourth. No, he has to be your first. He's only going to come and visit churches and, and live in churches and live in people that make him their first, their first love, their first Lord, their first everything. And so right now what we're going to do is we're just going to give honor to where honor is due. And this time isn't about you. This time is about God. This time is about putting him in his rightful place. The Bible says that we enthrone God on the praises of his people, that we actually make a throne. We make a place for him to come and habitat with us when we praise him. You know, praising isn't just a bunch of words. Praising comes from the heart. You know, praising is really because you're looking at him, and you know, when you begin to focus on Jesus... Praise just starts to happen. When you begin to remember all the things that God has done for your life and get off the things that you need, because a lot of us are just thinking about what we need, and our needs are always going to clog us up. You're always going to need something. You know, you might want some water right now, but then you're going to be hungry in an hour, and then you're going to have to go to the bathroom soon afterwards, and then something else is going to happen. And, you know, you're just going to, you're always going to have something you're going to be thinking about that's going to clog up your heart, clog up your mind. If you just don't say, no, I'm just going to push all that side. I'm going to put Jesus first. You know, one thing that just changed me lately that God has been revealing to me as a, a revelation is you know, that I need to just get rid of all the junk in my mind, all the, the junk in my heart. Because what I can do is I can come to God with all this stuff and I say, God, I need a healing. I need a breakthrough. I need this. I need that. And then what I do is I go to, to give it to God. And I, and I give it to God like this. I say, here you go, God, take it from me. And God's like, okay, let it go. But we're like, no, I, I got to keep on thinking about it. I got to keep on holding on to it. And it's just, we don't just say, no, God, you know what I need. You, you, you already know it, and Lord, here, here it is. And I just give it to you. And then I just stop thinking about it. And I just think about him. The Bible says that it's in confidence and quietness that he begins to move. Confidence in him, just quietness, not even worrying about it because you know that he has it. You know, and if you don't believe what I'm saying, what you've been doing and worrying isn't really helped you because I know it hasn't. No, and so God wants to just begin to break things off of people here today. He wants to just start to, to break things off of your mind, things off of your heart. There's so much, I just believe there's just so much baggage that we're just holding on to that God wants to take off of us. That you're just going to walk out of this place and you're going to feel like you just lost a ton of weight today. No, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great, but you just have to trust God. And so right now, we're just going to give God honor. I don't, I don't know if you want to stand up, if you want to kneel, if you want to sit there. But no, let's just begin to just raise our hands in an act of surrender. And let's just begin to just thank God. Let's begin to just honor him for who he is, Lord. We just worship you, God. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. You are faithful. Lord, you are worthy. You are holy, God. Lord, we make room for you, Lord. We want you, Lord. Lord, we ask that you forgive us, Lord, for just not putting you first, God. Lord, we give you our hearts. We give you our minds. Lord Jesus. And my heart won't for nothing but you, just you. coming forth from your children
too busy. Some people think that he just has all this other stuff that he has to do and it's too little all my stuff and I'm not going to just just talk to him about useless things but no, nothing's too little for God. God wants to come and break things off of people's lives here today. If there's something that you're just struggling with right now, if there's something on your heart that it just doesn't seem like it's able to shake right now off, I just want you just to lift your hands to God and just surrender that to him right now. just ask God that you would just come right now. Lord, we just ask that you would just break, Lord, whatever is upon their hearts that is heavy, Lord, Lord, where they've maybe lost a loved one, Lord, where maybe they're battling with sickness and disease, Lord, maybe they, uh, they're believing for loved ones, Lord. Lord, where they're just dealing with mental illness, whatever it might be, God, we know that you are all that we need. And Lord, I just ask right now in the name of Jesus for these things to break now. Lord, we just thank you right now for deliverance, God, over your people in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, just say to Jesus, I give it to you. Lord, I give it all to you right now. Just give it to him. Matthew 6, 33. It says this, and this is the, the verse that I want us to get, and I'm, I'm going to make this really just simple today. And then we're just going to have the, the time with God where I feel like we're just going to encounter God even more. I just wanted to get us to a place where God can begin to start to minister to us. Now, isn't, isn't it cool? When you start to focus on Jesus, the environment changes. When you start to put him first, when you begin to give him the honor he deserves, the atmosphere changes. And so, I want us to get this first, to go to a deeper level here today in our walk with God. In Matthew 6.33, it says this, Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Now, I love when verses in the Bible simplify a lot. Because sometimes I can read the Bible and I can look at it and I'm like, okay, the Bible has a lot of things I need to follow. But then here the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring all that you need. It says to do it above all else, and then it says also to live righteously, but I believe that if you're seeking the kingdom of God above all else, you're going to live righteously. Now, I don't think you can truly just want the things of God with all your hearts and live a worldly life. That, that's not going to happen. And so the cool thing about when you read the Bible and you look at Jesus, you know, Jesus doesn't exaggerate things. Because sometimes we've maybe been to churches before or we've heard people speak or maybe you have a friend or a family member, and when they say something, they say a statement, but it's just so far out there that you're like, I don't know if this is really true all the way. It would be something you, get, you can look at this almost, and you can begin to think that, but then yet, this is out of the words of Jesus, and you no, know, exaggerating is really just a lie. And so, you know, Jesus, there is no lie in him. He's only truth. And so, you look at this, and you're like, okay, he's 100% correct. He's not lying to us. He's saying that if you seek the kingdom of God above all else... 
you're going to have all you need. That's pretty cool. But here's the question I, I think that we need to understand here if we're going to be able to again begin to walk in it is, okay, right, so what and where is the kingdom of God? Because this is important. I, I need to know this because if I, if I know this, I get everything that I need. And so I think we can sometimes look at this and be like, okay, God, I'm not really sure what this means. I, I think I know. Or in our minds, we look at the Bible and it's like, okay, I, I need all the things that the Bible says. And so it just seems complicated to us. And so because it seems so complicated to us, sometimes you can get to this place. Have you ever been where it's just so complicated you don't even really try? Because you're like, I'm not even going to do this. It just kind of flusters me. And so sometimes we can take the word of God and we can get into this place where it's just so complicated in our minds that we just feel like, I can never have this. But no, this is very simple, and I want us to get this here today. And Luke 17, 20 through 21 says this. Now when he asked, when he was asked by the Pharisees, this is Jesus, when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Other translations say, in the midst of you. And so what I want to share here first before we go on is that the kingdom of God is within you. Some of you are looking in the wrong place. Because I don't know if you're a little like me, how I've been growing up is, you know, I was kind of looking for God in all the wrong places. I was looking for a miracle. I was looking for signs and wonders. I'm looking for, you know, this glory cloud that people have talked about in other places. And you see a couple times in the Bible, you're you're looking for all these just crazy, miraculous signs. How many of you have ever been like that before? Or it's like God starts moving in it, and it's like, well, I felt God, but nothing happened. So you just automatically think, well, it was just, I guess, an okay service then. And we missed out on the greatest thing that God was doing because we were looking on the outside and not on the inside. So the Bible also says that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You know, that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. Well, that's really cool. And that God has placed the Holy Spirit in us. Before, in the Old Testament, they would have to go to the temple, and you'd just be on the outer parts. You really wouldn't experience God. Only a few people could come closer. The priest could come a little closer, but only one person could go into the holies of holies. But now God has opened up access, full access to God through Jesus. And so... The Bible says here, going back, that the kingdom of God is within. And so we got to look at the inside. Because God is more into the inside than the outside. You know, not that the outside doesn't matter. If the outside didn't matter, he would have not have took those 39 lashes. So it's not that that doesn't matter. But no, if you get healed today, and you don't give your life to Christ, and he doesn't change you on the inside... You're going to die one day anyways, and you're going to go to hell. So the inside is more important because that is where eternity can be birthed in you. That's where you can come to life is on the inside. And so God wants to do a work on the inside of you. Some of the greatest moments that you've ever had where God has changed you is in moments that you didn't understand. Because it was on the inside And you walked out of that service or you walked out of that encounter with God and you just felt different. You're like, I don't even know what happened. It was really great. But you didn't really realize that all of a sudden now you're starting to love others a lot better. All of a sudden you're not wanting to to be around those old friends anymore. Now all of a sudden you're not wanting to watch that that trash that you were watching with TV shows and movies. And all of a sudden you just start to see you're you're being different. God is starting to, to mold you and to shape you. But the problem is that there's too many people looking for an outside encounter when God is wanting to encounter you on the inside. He's wanting to change you from the inside out. Too many churches are looking and too many Christians are looking for the outside and they don't realize that if God would just change them fully on the inside, they'd start to see more on the outside. But if you start to look for something on the outside before it goes on the inside, 
you're going to be frustrated with your Christian walk with God. You know, in Matthew 12, 38 through 40, it, it says, Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of a prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So Jesus, that other Pharisees back in those days, they were looking for outside signs. They were saying, Jesus, prove to us. Show us that you're the Son of God. We want to see signs and wonders. We want to see people raised from the dead. We want to see people healed. We heard you. You've done it before. Show it and prove to us right now. And he said, an evil and an adulterous people look for signs and wonders, basically. That that's what they're all about. That's where their focus is. Not that we don't want to see that happen here in this church and God move, but that's all that they care about. A people that really want God look to the inside and want to know God. You know that the kingdom of God is, is this upside-down kingdom. It doesn't really make sense. You can't really go into the kingdom of God and start to look at it the same way that you look at this world. For instance, when it comes to the kingdom, he changes you from the inside out. The world's telling you you need a, a new TV, you need a new car, you need a nicer house, you need all these things and you'll feel better. You'll have peace if you have more money in your bank account. You know, you're, you're exalted by becoming low like a servant. It doesn't make sense. You know, you're, you're filled by God when you become empty. Your wealth is not measured by what you have, but what you give in the kingdom of God. Everything's flipped. And so we got to realize that when we come into the kingdom of God, when it starts to, to function in our life, things start to get flipped. We can't just come and, and bring the way that we used to live in the world into the kingdom of God. Or we'll miss things. And so here we are, and we see that now the kingdom of God is in the inside. The kingdom of, of God is, back then, was in the, the midst of them, around them, because Jesus was there. But also it says on the inside of them, now that we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. But then, okay, so what is it now? So we know where it is. The kingdom of God is in the inside of us for those that are Christians. No, but what is it now? Now that I know it's on the inside, I'm looking to the inside. When I come to church and I start to worship God, I'm looking and, and I'm experiencing God on the inside. When I'm praying and singing, I'm looking, and I'm not just looking with my eyes open, looking for a miracle, and to say, oh, there's God, and now he's here. No, I'm looking on the inside, and I'm experiencing him. He's speaking to me on the inside. I'm not all of a sudden trying to hear him audibly anymore, but I'm trying to hear his voice on the inside of me. And so now, what is the kingdom? Well, in John 18, 36, Jesus says, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. And so Jesus says, my kingdom, and he says, my kingdom, many different times. Jesus talked about the kingdom of God a lot. If you look throughout scriptures, and he always says, my kingdom. And when he says, my kingdom, that means that Jesus is the king of the kingdom. But this is just not some ordinary kingdom when you put Jesus in this kingdom, because, you know, this kingdom, if you think about the kingdom of God, there's peace, there's love. There's healing, there's, there's joy, there's truth, there's freedom. There's all these things when we think about what the kingdom of God brings. But if you knock Jesus outside of it, what's left in the kingdom? Nothing. No, nothing is left outside of Jesus and the kingdom because he is the source of it all. He is the source of peace. He is the source of health. He's the source of life. He's the source of truth. It all comes from him as a person. It's not something that he just owns. You know, like if a king in this earth had a kingdom, 
You know, his kingdom is a bunch of things that he owns, but it's not really who he is. But in the kingdom of God, his kingdom is actually himself. Because everything in that kingdom comes from him. It's a part of who he is. And so what I want us to get here is because this is just so simple, yet so life-changing if you get this, is the kingdom of God is Jesus. The kingdom of God is Jesus. And the problem is for a lot of us, we're trying to use Jesus to get to the destination that we feel like God wants us to get to. We feel like I have this calling. You know, I have these things I believe that God wants to bring into my life. You know, I need some joy. I need some peace. I need some breakthrough. I need some freedom. And so we're asking Jesus for these things, but we don't realize that... If you just go after Jesus and you just touch him, you get it. You know, Jesus is not a means to the destination. Jesus is the destination. And we miss it as a church. That if you get Jesus, you get everything. It's all about Jesus. No, we're talking about the Holy Spirit here today. But you know what all of the Holy Spirit talks about is Jesus. No, really what the Holy Spirit does is you can look at him as this is, he's a connector all of a sudden to Jesus. He connects us to Jesus' presence. You know, it takes the Holy Spirit to hear Jesus. He opens up our senses. And he just leads us to Jesus. No, you, we, we can't talk about the Holy Spirit and experience him unless we talk about Jesus. No, because without the Holy Spirit, and what the Holy Spirit does on the inside, it's like this TV that is right here wouldn't work unless it was plugged in. You know, our spiritual senses are never going to work without the Holy Spirit being plugged into our life. Because you can't turn yourself on spiritually. You can't start to hear God. You can't start to see God in the way that he speaks. You need the Holy Spirit. He's the one that awakens all those giftings. You know, it takes God to see God. It takes God to hear God. It takes God to experience God. But what we need to do as a church is we got to seek Jesus. We've got to make sure that Jesus is everything. And we've got to fall in love with Jesus. Because I, I just believe that there's so many people with going to churches and they're in love with the church, but they're not that much in love with Jesus. Sometimes we've got to fall out of love with the church to really fall in love with Jesus, and then we can really love the church all right. And some of you might not know what I mean, but if, some of you might know what I'm talking about. So once you get Jesus, you get everything. If I could get the band, we're going to need you here just in a few minutes. But if you could just get all set, even playing in the background would be great. But I, I want us to get this here today is, you know, the way that we got into salvation is the way that we keep salvation. How, how did we get into salvation? Now, how did we walk into a relationship with God through Jesus? You know, but for a lot of us as Christians, we don't realize that when it comes to salvation, salvation is much more than Jesus just being the sin eraser and coming into our life and, and he just erases our sin and then all of a sudden we can go to heaven. It, it's much more than that. And when it, when it comes to salvation, salvation is the package deal that you get. The Bible says that we have every single spiritual gift in heavenly places that's been given to us. It's, in our, it's our inheritance from God is salvation. It's your healing. It's, it's eternity. It's every single spiritual blessing and, and gift and fruit. And all that God has is under the umbrella of salvation. And what happens is somehow we come and we make it all about Jesus when we get saved, but then we get all focused on all these other things as if they're outside of Jesus. And we, we get talking about, oh, I just want to have greater faith. And I just want to, you know, have 
a healing ministry, and I just want to be able to walk in deliverance and all this stuff. But the thing, though, is, is if you get Jesus, all of a sudden, who knows what can happen? Because when he's with you, when you know him, he shows up for his friends. You know, I heard that before, that Jesus shows up for his friends. And so many people are just so worried about, oh, I need greater faith. Well, no, this faith is not about you. No, when you know Jesus, all of a sudden, because you know him, you have greater faith in him. It's just a natural thing that happens. It's just some people are just like, I just got to have more faith as if it's just something else outside of Jesus. And you no, know, faith is just knowing Jesus more. That's how your faith grows. No power comes into your life because you know Jesus. Because you have a real encounter with him every single day. You're spending time with him. And so I want us to get this here today that it's all about Jesus. If we just seek Jesus as a church, if we just fall more and more in love with him, it's going to be so awesome to see what God does. No, Jesus is just not a piece. He's everything. He's everything. No, Jesus is just not a piece of your life. If you just do that, you're going to be missing out on so much areas of your life. And that's why I believe the church struggles and struggles and struggles and struggles with the same thing over and over and over again. It's because they have Jesus over here, but then they, they have all this stuff outside of him that they're dealing with. And we got to learn to just say, no, Jesus, I'm going to, have you as everything in my life. I'm going to place everything under your kingdom. I'm going to place my marriage under your reign. I'm going to place my kids under your reign. I'm going to place my body under your reign. I'm going to place all of myself in you. But you have to have a relationship with him. You have to fall in love with him. You have to really want to get to know him. And we can't just start going after his stuff because he is all of that. I'm just telling you today, if you get this today, it'll change your life. I just noticed just when I'm spending time with God now, and I'm just going after him, and I got that revelation that he is everything. He is all that I need. When I seek him, the kingdom first, everything that I need is given to me. It simplifies it so much more. Now I'm not just trying to seek for all these different things. No, I just know it's really easy. I just get next to Jesus and I just spend time with him and I'm just in his presence and I don't even really realize what's going on in the inside because it doesn't really make sense. But I just stay there and I just fall more and more and more in love with him and I just begin to after an hour, after two hours, I'm like something just really happened in my life. I'm not really sure, but I feel good. I feel at rest, I feel peace, I feel joy. You know, all those things that the world is seeking after. You know, I got. And it's just so awesome. And this morning, I just want us to be able to just, maybe for some of you for the first time in your whole life, just to really seek Jesus here today. I want to give you the opportunity before we go here to, to just seek him and him alone. And I'm telling you, if you will just cast your cares upon him and just say, I'm letting it go instead of just trying to hang on to things and just saying, Jesus, I give it to you, but not really letting it go. It's not going to really work too well for you, but if you just come to him and just say, no, I'm going to just trust you. I'm just going to seek after you. I'm not going to worry about all that other stuff. I'm just going to put my mind, my heart upon you and just allow you to take care of it. Just watch what he does. Just watch what he does. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pray and I'm going to have the band lead us and we're just going to sing the song, Only Jesus, and however else it goes. And if you want to come to the front and kneel, Raise your hands, stay seated, stand up, whatever. But I just want to encourage you just to seek Jesus. However that looks, begin to just give him everything. And just put your mind on him and him alone. Not on your problems, not on your family, not upon lunch, not upon anything else. And just watch.
and just trust God. And it's going to change your life, I believe. Lord, we just welcome you right now. Lord, we just ask that you would forgive us, Lord, for Lord, just making church sometimes about everything else but you. Lord, we just ask that you forgive us, Lord, for at times just going after all these things, Lord, but not really going after you. And Lord, we just ask right now that you would begin to change our hearts and align them with you, Lord. Lord, I just ask that you would become everything to us as this church, Lord. I just ask that it would be all about you, that you would just come close. For, Lord, only one encounter with you can change us. Lord, I just believe that some people are never going to be the same here today. Lord, I just ask that you would just break things off people's minds, off their hearts, God. Lord, let us truly just make you everything right now and seek you first. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may have come forward or wherever to seek God. In my heart, I'm for nothing but you, just you. The riches of this world could never satisfy.